What's up guys and welcome back to the penultimate episode of Season 2 of F1 2016 Career Mode, the Brazilian Grand Prix. You can see the driver's standings now. The gap is only down to one single point between myself and Daniel Ricciardo. Things are getting very, very close. Uh, we had a, a pretty momentous lead heading into the previous episode and we've blown that away to one point now. So heading into this race, uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix, we're going to need another clutch round in order to, uh, you know, get back on the pace, you know, get that uh, ascendancy in the championship once again because we've lost all of the momentum in the last few rounds. The pace has absolutely not been there. And as you can see in these Friday practice clips I'm showing you, this is me just fine-tuning the setup, you know, getting accustomed with this game properly. I really took this uh, FP1 seriously. As I say, taking it seriously, I went was so far wide off turn one, I essentially went off into Narnia. And um, yeah, after doing lots and lots and lots of running, I um, made a few final adjustments to the setup and I went out and did a final run on the medium compound tyres to really um, see what the pace is like in a qualifying sense. You know, I got the balance right, I got the aerodynamics right as well in terms of, you know, balancing out, you know, whether we want to go for straight line speed versus, you know, obtaining speed through the middle sector as well. And I feel like I found that perfect balance between straight line speed, uh, aerodynamics, and also a little bit with the grip as well. So we've got a really good package heading into qualifying and the race. Welcome to qualifying here in Interlagos as the cars are readying up for what's likely to be a very important session. Thank you very much, Crofty. In the last few qualifying efforts, you know, it hasn't been that great, and I want to amend that heading into the Brazilian Grand Prix. That's why I put in so much uh, effort into getting the setup right, really getting accustomed to this racetrack before I headed into um, the Saturday and Sunday uh, sessions for this race weekend. I really want to overturn that bad form that we've been showing in these last few rounds. So qualifying one, we opt to go on the medium tyres to uh, get that out of the way, get ourselves into qualifying two, and then leave more sets of the soft compound tire for both qualifying two and qualifying three. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, and hopefully I can secure a lap straight away that'll get me um, into the final part of qualifying, and hopefully not to take too much life out of these tires as well, as we will be starting on them if we can make it out of this session, which fingers crossed we should be able to do. There was a little bit of a threat for rain, for this second part of qualifying and um, yeah, the track conditions definitely went away a little bit as that session uh, went on there but we made, made, managed to make it through to qualifying three um, two positions ahead of our teammate Pascal Wehrlein and still just a little bit away from the Red Bull so overall the pace still isn't there for you know trying to to be world beaters in this uh, weekend um, qualifying, but I still feel like there was more on the table to offer and I'm definitely going to be bringing that in qualifying three now as we bring to an end our first run in this session. Looks like a fairly good uh, middle sector we had there. I think it was purple. We come across the line, we go position two and only 44 hundredths of a second away from Max Verstappen. A few minutes later to the end of the session and we drop to P4. We're about to start our final lap of the session. Taking a bit of a NASCAR line there, trying to go around the outside, try and build up some speed before I start my lap. Give myself better top end speed before I start my final lap of the session. And uh, looks like it's kind of worked for me as we go through the first sector split at the end of this straight. We're going to be near enough a tenth up on our previous best. So we're looking good so far. The checkered flag is about to drop. The uh, track is fully rubbered in. There's a bit of cloud cover overhead as well. So it should be, you know, almost optimal conditions for us to, to bang in possibly a fastest lap of the weekend. Checkered flag is out. We're about two and a half tenths near enough to um, being up on our previous best time. That wasn't the best of exits there on the exit of that one. Heading into this almost hairpin corner. It'll be smooth on the throw. We got a bit of oversteer as we ventured out wide onto the curb. Lost us about three hundredths of a second there. Heading to essentially the final corner. Inside front lockup. Bad exit there. Bit of oversteer. And uh, we've lost another half a tenth as the uh, gap is now dwindling ever so slightly. And this lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix is going to come to an end. How far up the grid can we move? I think it was position three. I think it was P3. That's not too bad when you consider... 
That's, uh, we've been absolutely dreadful in terms of one lap pace over the last two rounds. I will definitely take third place after what's transpired in the previous few rounds in terms of our qualifying efforts. We are there with a chance. We are there to strike if the Red Bulls, uh, you know, muck it up in the race. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can just get in front of them and beat them in terms of uh, race positions. Because if we don't, and if Daniel Ricciardo gains any more points on us heading into the final race of the season... I think that's going to be championship over. So, without further ado, it's time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. So here we are then, on the grid of the Brazilian Grand Prix. I have a lot of history at this racetrack. Hopefully, once again, it can come in the goods for us. In terms of the race strategy, we can completely throw it out the window because we've got rain, then heavy rain, for the second half of this race. So who knows what's going to happen. I'm going to start on the soft compound tyres. I have to. And then I think I'm going to switch onto either the mediums and most likely the hards and just wait it out until that rain comes down. And then it's any man's guess as to who is going to come out on top in terms of race strategy, raw pace, or even consistency in the rain. But here we go, ready for the start of this race, the Brazilian Grand Prix. Five red lights, and it's away we go for the second last race of Season 2. Who's going to win this championship? It might be decided by this first lap. We can see Daniel Ricciardo takes the lead over from Max Verstappen, who has started on the medium compound tyres. Very crucial for him. He might be in a rear gunner's position for Daniel Ricciardo, but no boy going round the outside of him and into second place. Ricciardo has the lead now, and uh, Red Bull have uh, screwed that up a little bit. Got a little bit nervous there heading into turn four. Turned in a little bit too early and uh, got some oversteer on the exit as well, which definitely didn't, hurt, didn't help my lap time on this first lap as Daniel Ricciardo was etched out of lead, which is over a second. So it's down to us now. If we want to win this championship, if we want to stake our claim as being a serious threat, we really need to close him in and get within that one second DRS window to uh, really attack him because uh, the, the slipstream, the DRS, is really powerful on F1 2016. And with Brazil being such a short lap time, having two DRS zones, if you can stay within that slipstream, it makes a massive difference in terms of your lap time because you can essentially just tag along with the next car ahead. Oh. Wow, so Ricardo is having issues with his car at the moment. I'm not too sure what it is. As we have a look on the replay, it doesn't look like it's a puncture of any kind. So it must be something mechanical, maybe ERS or something like that. The deployment isn't working properly. It slowed him down a little bit right as we were starting to bang in those purple lap times. And now Ricardo has opted for an early pit stop here to pit into the medium compound tyres, I'm guessing. So uh, yeah, it's very interesting to see that Ricardo is uh, pitting so early on in this race. I think I'm going to respond possibly on the next lap. Um, surely he's going to held up, get held up by a little bit of traffic and we're going to try and uh, make the most of that. I'm essentially wanting to, to mirror whatever Daniel Ricciardo does because we are battling him so fiercely in the championship. It would only be smart to, to shadow him and only uh, jump him in terms of the pit stops once we rejoin on the track. So coming into the pits now and we're going to pit in for the hard compound tyres like we planned earlier on in the race, or before the race started actually, because we know the rain is coming in a very short space of time. You can see Ricardo there is uh, flying down that stuff and he's straight now. And uh, we're going to have a shorter run to turn four than what he will, so I think we might just about get in front of him. It's going to be pretty close though, I must say. There goes Gutierrez and Massa on our right hand side. Daniel Ricardo should be right behind us. He's actually behind Grosjean there, so we have jumped Daniel Ricciardo and now we have the effective lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's now down to us now to get in front of Gutierrez, Massa, all these guys in front of us and try and create a little bit of breathing space between myself and Daniel while his car is going a little bit slowly. I know that when a particular car is reported to have a problem, they end up fixing it uh, you know, a few laps later. So I just want to get that gap to Ricciardo before his car starts you know, working at full pace again. That's going to give us the advantage heading into the second half of this race. One of the Williams in front of us makes his pit stop. That was Felipe Massa. 
Now we have the other Williams of Bottas right in front of us on the medium tyres. And all these guys around us seem to be running a long way into this race on the mediums. Maybe with the weather coming later on, this kind of strategy call of running deeper into the race might help them a little bit. And uh, wow, the engineer just said over the radio that rain is scheduled to come down in under 10 minutes time. So we're pretty much in prime position here to capitalize and uh, switch onto the intermediate tires as soon as we're ready. We're not you know, limited by tire wear or anything like that. We're on the hard compound tires. We can run a long way into this race um, and wait until the rain comes down. The guys in front of us like Jensen Button, who makes a huge mistake there, um, he's not going to be any chance because he's on uh, rubber that's just about at the end of its life here. So, lap 15, and the rain is really starting to fall down now. Radio. We think there's a viable strategy change available to us. Would you like to keep to the current plan or try the new one? Okay, so the time has come now to switch onto the intermediate tyres right as the track is really starting to diminish in terms of overall grip. The rain is coming down now. It's the perfect time to switch onto the intermediate tyres and run uh, a few laps, possibly until the heavy rain starts to fall down. If you guys remember back to the uh, the early forecast for rain, it looks like there was a small patch of period, a small period where the heavy rain was scheduled to come down. So I don't know whether that's going to come immediately in the next five minutes, whether it's going to come down near the end of the race. I'm not too sure, but that was a huge loss of the back end coming out of the pit lane there. Just managed to save that before we um, smashed into the wall there. That would have been a devastating way to end this race, being in the lead and uh, crashing out essentially in the pit lane. This is Daniel Ricciardo, a replay of him. He's actually moved into the lead of this race now, but he stayed out just that lap too long. He's on the dry tyres on a wet track. Verstappen got preference in terms of the pit stops, and so Ricciardo has been hung out to dry here, or hung out to essentially drown in his dry compound tyres. So here we go, on the intermediate tyres, we're going to overtake Daniel Ricciardo, our championship rival, round the outside, and uh, that is just a massive slap in the face as we saw past him like it was absolutely nothing. I think there was a bit of contact there on the exit of that corner. You'll see on the replay here from the helicopter view, I'm just pace, uh, placing full faith in Daniel there not to run out wide on the outside and squeeze me off. He left me the space, but I think somewhere Along the way, there was a little bit of contact heading into the braking zone. Yeah, Ricardo pinched an inside front tire there, and unfortunately, there was a little bit of contact made between the two of us, but thankfully, there was no damage conceived. You could be okay in this weather. We're watching the amount of standing water on the road. For now, we think it's safe to stay with the Inter. We're very low on fuel. Trying to shift up through the gears earlier. It may help save more. So we're getting to a very intense part of the race now, having to manage both the weather, managing the fuel, managing tire wear, managing lots of different things, including uh, where Daniel Ricciardo is in this race, trying to maintain the lead at the moment, which is out to 21 seconds. Uh, speaking of being out somewhere, there's Felipe Massa going off into uh, Mexico there through turn one, just left me way too much space. I think he locked up an inside front tire there and sent himself wide. But uh, lap 23. I was just going to mention that. Lap 23, we're getting to the point where the heavy rain is um, just a few moments away as we come to lap Nico Rosberg in a Mercedes who is in 18th place. 18th place in a Mercedes. I don't know what kind of race he's had, but it's been an absolutely dreadful one for him. Lapping quite a few cars here as we um, come to the, the end part of this race now. Only 9, 11 laps to go, something like that as we get in front of Gutierrez there, the likes of Verstappen and Raikkonen have switched onto the wets. Wow, that's actually very interesting because I was asking the uh, engineer what was happening in terms of weather. I was just getting ready to switch onto the wet compound tyres and then um, he lets me know that it's going to be light rain in under five minutes time again. So it might just be worth staying out on the intermediate tyres and running the duration of this race. Um, without making a pit stop. We might actually gain even more time over these guys. So as long as I keep it consistent over the next few laps, uh, not make any mistakes, the, the track conditions are going to come back to us once again. And um, we should essentially have an even bigger lead than what we had before. It was 
something like 40 odd seconds. They were closing me in a little bit, but now the uh, light rain is starting to come back again, and now it's coming back in my favour. So this has just been such a topsy turvy race, and um, our lead has been made, has been exemplified because of the, uh, the the brief wet weather period. And uh, yeah, it's just been. Uh, just, just crazy. Just so much happening over the course of this race. Verstappen is in second, Raikkonen in third. The tyre wear has been absolutely dreadful. You can see it's at 84%, something like that. We've been conserving fuel for the last, you know, 10 laps as well as looking after the tyres. And now you can see that's actually Daniel Ricciardo right behind us, a lap down. That is, uh, that's, that's monumental. Absolutely crazy. It would be awesome to finish in front of him. He's going up the inside there. There's contact between the championship rivals and Ricardo has spun out with us and he's out of the race. Daniel Ricardo is out of the Brazilian Grand Prix and this could mean we win the championship because of this moment right here. Lewis Hamilton has smashed into the back of uh, Daniel Ricardo there as he made contact with us. You can see he goes for a gap up the inside. I, oh, I don't know. Is that my fault? Is it Daniel's for going for the gap? I don't know. You'll have to let me know down in the comments. There's obviously going to be a lot of split opinion about this, but I think looking at the replay, it might be my fault. I'm not entirely sure. As we slow it down, neither of us are entirely happy about that. Ricardo gets sent into a half spin. It's just so unfortunate that Lewis Hamilton was right there because Daniel Ricardo would have carried on otherwise and the championship fight would have carried on into the finale in Abu Dhabi. Here's an onboard from Lewis Hamilton. You'll see the contact between the two of us right up ahead. And then Lewis, oh no, he doesn't even break. He doesn't even try to avoid that accident there. And uh, yeah, it's just so unfortunate to have the championship come down to a moment like this. And uh, that's it. Daniel Ricciardo's championship is now over. How could this happen? No, Jeff, I, I really don't think we need to alternate the strategy on the last lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Uh, can you believe it? Lewis Hamilton, not for the first time, has been involved in some major controversy involving the Brazilian Grand Prix in the rain on the last lap. But either way, here we go. We are going to win the race and win the championship for this MANA Racing Team car. We started off as the slowest car in Season 1. And look at us now. We're going to win the championship in a MANA Racing Team car. Get in! You've been superb all season and you've got your reward. You are the Drivers World Champion. Woo! Yeah! 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 Thank you, guys. It's been my privilege over the years to witness a number of great sporting events and here's another to add to that prestigious list. It's the ultimate dream for any racing driver. We have a new Formula One World Champion. This wouldn't be an F1 season without a little bit of controversy. We have won the Brazilian Grand Prix and we've absolutely dominated this race. Uh, say what you want about that last lap, but um, yeah, that, that, that win just came out of nowhere in terms of, in terms of the championship. There I was fully anticipating a really intense battle heading, heading into the finale in Abu Dhabi, but um, that's not the way that it's transpired and uh, here we have ourselves being world champions in the manor racing team uh, absolutely unbelievable i don't know what to say after that uh we lapped 
um, all but like three other cars in this race. You know, we did everything right. I, I, I made sure right from the start of the weekend that I was happy with the balance of the car, with the setup and everything. And then all the cards just fell into place when we headed into the race. We made the right strategy calls when we needed to. And uh, look at that right there. 26 point lead to Daniel Ricciardo in the driver's standings. We are untouchable, uncatchable, heading into the finale in Abu Dhabi. I don't know what to do now for the final episode of this series, of season two, sorry. I don't know whether I should start from the back in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix or whether I should gun for the Constructors Championship, which might be a little bit out of reach with Red Bull being very consistent in the last few races. You can see the gap to um, Red Bull is, is it 18 points? Yes, it is. So with a gap that large, I think we need the mana car to finish 1-2 and then the Red Bulls like 5 and 6 in order to win the Constructors. So let me know whether I should start from the back or not in Abu Dhabi. Hi, Emma here. I had a sit down with the executives today to talk about your progress. Long story short, they're happy. Keep it up. Well, that's, that's good to see. We win the championship and of course the team... It's going to be happy with my performances. But that has been the end of this episode. The Brazilian Grand Prix for Season 2 of F1 2016 Career Mode. We've won the championship. The Constructors is still well and truly up for grabs. It's going to be an awfully tough, tough ask um, for us to, to achieve that. Pascal Verlein has been a little bit patchy. The manor itself has been a little bit patchy these last few rounds. So I think it might just be second for us in the Constructors. So heading into the final race of Season 2... I'm just looking to have a little bit of fun. Maybe start from the back and see how many overtakes I can get in that Grand Prix. So, yeah, we, we haven't officially got the uh, driver's uh, trophy just yet. We'll be getting that when we head to the finale in the next race. So stay tuned for that. The final uh, episode of Season 2 is coming very, very soon. And then not long after that, we'll be starting Season 3 in a new car, a new challenge, and uh, hopefully... Uh, a whole new set of rivalries, um, challenges, all that kind of thing. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to leave uh, a vote to a straw poll for uh, your suggestion, what team I should drive for next season. It's not going to be the official vote, but I'd just like your feedback to see what car I should drive for in Season 3. That's been this episode for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. The Brazilian Grand Prix. Smash a like button. We're world champions. See you in Abu Dhabi for the finale.